Hang on to your seat, baby, cause this one's a scream. <laughs> What is going on, Entertain So Tam come to y'all with another video. So in this video, guys, we're talking Hollywood Hot Topics, or in other words, a stop in the neighborhood. Before I get started, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, let me know what y'all think about this uh, video, okay? So, of course, we're all talking uh, Diddy, okay? So, of course, you all saw his home get raided. Y'all, this is like, it was covered live throughout the whole news programming in the South Florida area, because I know I stay down here. Live coverage. They were at his home, at his home all night, barricaded his home, Homeland Security. I'm talking midnight. I'm watching TV, and they're still there doing live coverage at this man's home. Homeland Security is still there, barricading it. So this doesn't come to me as a surprise. We've all seen all the stuff that's come in the past year just about him. 2024 is not playing with anyone. You know what's crazy? I seen somebody comment. <laughs> This is going to come out later, so I just cannot wait till this, that comes out because it's funny how, like, people speak on stuff that they're literally involved in. It was a girl. She's working for this network, and she's, she commented on it. I'm like, out of everybody that, from that network, you are the one that's going to say something about this when well, you know you should be the last one speaking about any of this. It just gagged me seeing that because it's like, it's one thing... To have your opinion on certain things, but it when it hits close to home and you're involved in some of the same stuff that you know this man's being accused of doing, you might want to be quiet because you don't have the room to talk. All right. Now, while his home was being raided, we all saw uh, his sons were put in fisticuffs, and then he was pandering around the Miami Opalaka Executive Airport when his home was being raided. If you guys do not know, Young Miami's from Opalaka, so it's kind of funny how those two kind of correlate depending on your humor um and you know Miami is known for the deodorate it's just it's just the facts all right now in this video he does look like he's thinking hard because of probably guilt probably all the things he knows that will happen up and coming do i feel guilty for the son do i feel bad and, and sympathy for the sons not really, because just from the documents that were shown, I have them right here. If you guys haven't checked out my video, I did a whole video where I broke down uh, the Rodney Jones versus uh, Sean Combs, Justin, Ethiopia, who now is, um, you know, testifying against Diddy and is cooperating. All right. Diddy is literally living... A mob wives, but in real life, like, but mob wives is real life, so I can't even say that. He's just he has his own mob wife life right now because now you have somebody who was super close to you turn informant, aka rat, in my <laughs> Drita voice. She's a rat whore, okay? Now she's turning and is going to be telling all the truth in return to getting dropped from this lawsuit she was listed right here it says defendant uh christina Corom is the chief of staff to sean uh well no defendant ethiopia is the former ceo of defendant multi records the parent company of defendant love records okay so she is now planning on telling the truth and not holding anything back so this isn't really good news for diddy because some of the stuff that she's going to be uh revealing will probably hurt him even more and will put him into uh deeper they did of course seize all of the electronics which okay i have two thoughts about this i would think diddy's smart enough to delete anything that would get in him into any criminal prosecution even deeper than he's already in i would think and i would hope he's smart enough not i would hope because i hope i hope he's prosecuted for everything that he did but somebody who is of intelligence would delete something if you get sued for something as a magnitude as cassie got him for i'm talking everything so if stuff comes out with the electronics that were gathered to me, he's a bigger fool than I thought. I'm sorry. Because you would have to know something like that 
is something of that magnitude. It's only going to get worse. So eventually they're going to raid your home. If you're being accused of trafficking, they're going to eventually raid your home. They're going to eventually confiscate electronics that you own. But some people do not think ahead like that. Who knows? Which really how electronic and technology works, you can really delete something and it could easily be recovered back due to Homeland Security and how their processes work. So who knows how they that may work out. It said during the searches, SHI agents seized a number of electronic devices from Diddy's uh, Los Angeles mansion as a part of ongoing investigation. The probe is being led by prosecutors from the Southern District of New York to note Mr. Combs has been accused of various offensive including R-wording, trafficking, other forms of abuse by four women who have filed civil suits against him. Despite these allegations, Comb has vehemently denied any of the claims. Okay, and that this has been the most recent update that we've seen where basically his drug mule has been um, arrested yesterday in Miami due to this. Now... I know powder Hedona head when I see one, especially in Miami. <laughs> I'm telling you, they raid, okay, a lot through these streets, and they're very noticeable. So if you were to tell me he's doing something like this, I would believe it. I'm just saying. His name is Brendan Paul. If you guys don't know, he was also talked about in the lawsuit um, as well with uh, Rodney. He was implicated in there as well, and he had uh, pictures in there as well. So basically, Rodney Jones and his lawsuit against Diddy talked about um, Brandon and talked about how Brandon was basically, Brandon, my bad, Brandon was basically in charge of felic uh, felicitating the powder donuts between the stuff that Diddy needed, getting the type of stuff that he needed, pills, etc. So he was really the man in charge of that. So here are some of the pictures from the lawsuit that showed um, the implications of that. I'm going to read a short uh, version of the lawsuit that implicated that part. It said it was important to defend according to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready when he asked for it. Defendant ordered workers and for Mr. Combs. Defendant ordered and distributed powder donuts Pop Rocks, y'all know I can't say these words on here, to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who are present on his rented yacht in his homes in LA and NYC and Miami. On multiple occasions, defendant forced Mr. Jones to carry Mr. Combs' drug pouch against his will. As chief to staff, defendant was instrumental in organizing and executing the RICO enterprise. Defendant had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the enterprise, Stevie J, for their SEX workers, if this trial, if this whole case ends up going to trial and it's a public trial, so where we be able to see it televised, this will be one of the most infamous cases, and I think it will be bigger than the OJ trial. Mark my words, it will be bigger than the OJ trial because of all the moving parts that are attached to it. We have Stevie J, we have the Sons, we have the Motown worker. We have a lot of people that are surrounded this case that will probably have to be forced to testify or have something to do with the case. So I believe he'll be more infamous than OJ. So Brandon Paul works as Mr. Combs' mule. He acquires, distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and pow pals. So this is Franken Santelli works alongside Brandon. While Brandon acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' powder donuts and pow pals, Frankie carries the money and pays for the guns and powder donuts and as you see him right here this is the frankie Santanelli, and that's brendan paul that was recently arrested i feel like he's gonna sing like a canary <laughs> what diana used to say canary <laughs> y'all remember on dd4 and i used to have a girl named canary <laughs> he's gonna sing like a canary i think a hundred percent because who would want to take such a big fall and spend so much time while you could just tell the truth and maybe go back into the, and go into the witness protection program so you're not harmed. Okay? But I do believe 100% that 
he is going to sing like a canary, and rightfully so, because all those charges are, that are going to be against him are going to be a lot more if he doesn't open his mouth. Now, he was arrested on possession. So him being arrested on possession for it doesn't help anything. It actually makes it even worse. It said, according to Rolling Star Diddy's alleged drug mule, Brandon Paul was arrested in Miami on powder donuts and marijuana charges. Arresting officers claimed Brandon had the contraband inside his personal travel bags and the suspect's powder donuts was located and tested. Coincidentally, the arrest came at the same time as Diddy's homes were raided by Homeland Security. Police were working alongside... HS agents when the arrest was made at the Miami Dade airport, according to the arrest affidavit. As of right now, it is unclear if the arrest and raids are connected, but Brandon was named in the trafficking lawsuit against Diddy as the person who allegedly supplied the mogul drugs. Could have been planted on him. I wouldn't doubt it, allegedly. Um, a lot of people in the South especially when it comes to certain departments are extremely corrupted and if they want answers they'll do certain things to make it happen so i wouldn't doubt if they you know they slip some in there just to make sure they have him in their custody so they could grill him and ask him some tough questions so there's a lot of things that are can be suggested from this because how convenient he gets arrested for possession the same day Diddy gets raided. Like, the convenience is crazy. That's the day he wouldn't have anything, any supply on him. But that's the day he apparently has the mo the supply that would get him behind bars. Y'all get what I'm saying? So how convenient. Keep that in mind. Anyways, Kenneth Owens. <sighs> I'm so sick of this lady. Y'all give this lady so much clout and airtime, and it's ridiculous. Like, it's like she's like the coon clown. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's Candy. Uh, that's Candace Owens. We're going to call her the coon clown. It's like y'all love to just uh, entertain this lady when she's not even of us. She don't like us. Okay? She probably left that Breakfast Club interview and was just like, oh, my God, it smelled like uh, weed and a whole lot of incense, all right? And sat her ass down and, and, and shot with Dove soap, okay, and not shea butter, right? Like, that's the type of girl that y'all like entertain. It's, like, ridiculous. So she tweeted, she said, the feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what, what he was up to, but he is going to be the fall guy so they can protect the people at the top of the ring. They're raiding his home to hide evidence, not find it. That's how this works. Although I don't like her, I see, I can see where she's coming from. I do feel like there's a lot more at work than we're actually seeing. And he's taking the brunt of it. Now, what the argument that I don't agree with is people saying he pissed somebody off at the top of the food chain. I wouldn't think that's true. Because Nobody forced him to do what he did to Cassie. So you can't really say that. Because think about it. And had he not did the things he did to Cassie, a lot of this wouldn't be happening. There wouldn't be this big trickle effect that just happened to this man right now. After the Cassie lawsuit was done and over with, it was a trickle effect. That trickle effect wouldn't have happened had him and Cassie ended on amicable terms. He never abused her. He never asked her. And they just broke up because they didn't like each other. None of this would have happened because she wouldn't have had no suit. So you can't really say that as an argument. That's the part, that's the only thing that kind of bothers me. But I do think there are, are more at play in regards to the blaming of uh, certain stuff. All right. Now, Young Miami, on the other hand, y'all, is being trolled and she is acting to everything that's going on. I hate when celebrities do this because shut up. Like, girl, you know what's going on. Don't don't try to, like, oh, what's for lunch today? Like, don't do that. That's not cute, especially with this situation. It's not funny. It's not, like, it's not glamorous. So there's nothing, like, it's not like, you know, you had an ex that just got beat up by some niggas. Then you kind of, you know, that's something you could key about. But he just got accused of some heinous type of stuff, okay? So heinous shit. So, you know, this not something you could, like, kick, 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 kick. like, no. Especially when you were just involved with this man months ago. That's just what I think. Just be quiet on social media. Like, there's no point of kind of like being oblivious, being 
purposefully oblivious to it. That's what I call it. So somebody tweeted, said, where Carisha at? She said, what's right here? Right here. What's up? Like, you don't have to reply to that. You don't have to reply to that. Like, what's the point of replying to that? What I don't agree with is the people trolling her. Although I think she shouldn't do the, you know, purposefully oblivious tweets. I don't think she deserved to be trolled either, especially by this chipmunk. DJ Academics, at this point, leave the girl alone. Like, you bothering her ain't going to change nothing. He tweeted, confirm cooperator right here. What you mean you right here? Feds at all three of that dude's property. You ain't acting bad no more. Now, do I think Carisha will turn informant? Yes. Carisha's not a fool. And Carisha will not do good behind bars. She's no JT. I'm sorry. JT's a gritty bitch. She's a tough one. She's never going to be able, in my opinion, to be able to handle life behind bars like JT did. She's too much of a city girl. That's the difference. Like, y'all got to understand, Carisha's a city girl. Uh, JT is a street girl. There's a difference. There's a huge difference. So I think she will sing like a canary if something were to happen. And I wouldn't blame her either. I just think it's a little bit of a karma for JT, for Carisha because of all of the stuff uh, that she would brag about in regards to some of the women that Diddy has dealt with and her back and forth with them and her saying basically, I'm the one, too bad, you know, clapping back at this ex, clapping back at that ex, and I'll look at you now. You don't even want anything to do with the man. So this is why you shouldn't brag on too much stuff in regards to relationships, especially when you're really like a sugar baby and then you get results like this. Also, another person who tried was Hitmaker. He said, she said, I've been in my head and out my bag just overthinking and second guessing myself, but I'm back in my bag. And then he says, get in your bag and stay back. No, Diddy. Now, this was, that's not even a troll. You just, you just fucking with her. Like, damn. He said it today. You know, he got blocked. Okay. And Hitmaker isn't really in a position of talking because the stuff that you've done in the past, you're another Diddy too. So Amy, you can't even use the word no diddy. The thing is, people need to know the hashtag no diddy is for people that haven't done some of the actions that he said or don't plan on doing some of the actions he said. So if I say no diddy, it's another word for no homo, right? But it means other things as well. No diddy, not trying to hurt you. No diddy, I, I don't have underlying intentions. No diddy, I'm not, I haven't done DD. So you can't use that term, no diddy. Because you have done Diddy things to Masika, to other girls. So you are Diddy, okay? You can't use that. Now, Carisha is better than me. I would reply back to that one. I'm sorry. Like, you're not going to get a key out of me with your past. Like, you, <laughs> there's certain things that it's like, uh-uh, you, you can't let slide because not everybody think they're going to skate roll on you and slide and make fun of you. No. And now another person, of course, who's been doing the ultimate trolling is 50 Cent. This man got shot for a reason. I swear to God. Like, because he is ruthless. He is ruthless with the amount of trolling that he does against Diddy. Like, I feel like the people that pow pow him when he was younger, he used to probably troll them uh, with the street dudes all the time. And that's exactly why what happened to him happened to him because damn <laughs> he didn't even wait till the news was aired for an hour he he did that within a few milliseconds of when everything dropped he didn't even wait he's just like ah, oh, i'm gonna get at him i'm gonna get at him okay um the only people i feel bad in the story is his daughters because of course his daughters had nothing to do with anything and they didn't ask to be brought into this world. And it's really sad because they're them losing their mom and now potentially going to lose their father. Because I do believe he's going to face some time for this. It's sad. It's very, very sad. Uh, of course, the psychic has been given a lot of credit because of everything that she predicted that will happen around Easter time to Diddy. And it all has come true. And if you go back and watch a reading, because I do believe in psychic readings. She claims that Diddy 
in a form of silence. So he'll be able to say certain things because he'll he, his mouth will be zipped. Which the way that she describes it, it sounds like a sort of medical thing that will happen to him as if he's going to be going into some depressive state to some sort where it's like neuro neurologically he won't be able to speak. That's what it sounded like to me. Let me know what you guys got from that reading. Um, but she did do a reading about Diddy and she was literally spot on. She has done some about certain celebrities as well, from Jay-Z to take off. Uh, the Jay-Z one is very interesting because a lot of people feel as if, this is her YouTube channel, guys. A lot of people feel as if it's not true, but some people, you know, do believe that those things might come true, okay? Let me know what y'all think about this whole situation. Who do you guys feel sympathy for? Do you think the son should have been put into handcuffs yesterday? Do you think um, the rating took it a little bit too far with that? But it is protocol, y'all. Let me just let you let it, know. Yeah, it's protocol, okay? Let me know what think down below. And also, well, let's get into some other topics. Okay, right, so Portia, here's somebody I don't feel no sympathy for. I'm sorry. Now, I, the only part I feel a little sympathetic about is her not being able to get her her belongings. Simon is a dirty mf -er for that. For you to change her, her locks is crazy. Now, Portia says that Simon locked her out of her Georgia mansion where they lived, and they fled to Dubai to prevent her from getting her belongings. Another thing, I want to talk a little bit about the thing. one more thing. It's kind of crazy, though, how he was planning on going to his PJ to the Caribbean. Diddy, what you think you're going to do? Follow the baddies? Uh-huh. You can't be following the baddies with Lemmy Pepper and them. Nah, nigga. Nah, nigga. That nigga was trying to go to the baddies. He heard it was in the Caribbean. He said, let me follow suit. Nah, nigga. All right. And fled to Dubai to prevent her from getting her belongings. According to Radar Online, she asked for an emergency hearing after Simon allegedly changed the locks to prevent her from entering the Georgia mansion where they both live. Simon has responded to the divorce petition that Portia filed in February. Per the report, Portia said they lived in the home since prior getting married on November 25, 2022. Portia alleges that Simon has changed the garage code multiple times to prevent her from accessing the home. She says him fleeing to Dubai after doing so was so vindictive. On Monday, reports uh, surfaced that Simon claimed Portia bought a gum into their home. and It appears she just wanted her belongings. Okay. Now, Portia, you guys are married. So the home belongs to you too. I would have broke a window in that home, got in my house, got it, got my belongings, and uh, went somewhere else to live temporarily until this divorce was settled and try to take the home from that nigga. Like, seriously. That is some manipulative type of crap. Now, that's the part I feel a little simple because, like, what thing I don't believe is you touching people's stuff because people work hard for their stuff. So her not being able to access her stuff is, like, sick. And you, you got to wonder what he probably did to that to her stuff inside of the home. But I do believe this is a little bit of Portia's karma because of how she got him. I don't care what anybody says. I'll argue to the day that I die that how you get him is how you lose him. The way that you got with him was very quick and it wasn't the most honest. Regardless if she was cheating, Fallon had a baby from three men uh, by the time her and Simon were still married. It doesn't matter. It wasn't honest. It wasn't honest the way that you got him. It was inconsistencies in how this marriage came about. Clearly, you saw on the show as well, Portia wasn't the most innocent on her own reality show, which it's funny. You would think she would have her own reality show again because it would still get a lot of views with all this drama going on, but instead goes back to Housewives because she knows that this marriage is finished. She, and she wants her Bravo check back, which I don't blame her because a Bravo check is a good check. And also... She says that uh, Simon reportedly demanded Portia not delete text messages between her and a mystery man amid a bitter divorce. Over the last few days, more, Portia and her estranged husband, Simon Gorbati, has been going back and forth through court filings accusing the other of misconduct amid their divorce. First, Simon accused Portia of bringing a gunman to their home without permission. Then Portia followed this up by accusing Simon of locking her out the house, refusing to get her things. Well, now Simon is demanding that Portia not delete text messages between her and a mystery man. 
According to the documents obtained by Radar Online, Simon notified Portia to keep all the physical evidence, including all communication she had with a man named Kevin Uwosu Ansa. So, ah, oh, Portia's got another African. <laughs> Portia's got another Nigerian. I know a Nigerian last name when I see one. Uh huh. It is unclear what Kevin's relationship is with Portia, but it's obvious that Simon believes there's some incriminating things in their messages, which is why he doesn't want her to delete them. Simon also wants Portia to keep messages between her and her sister Lauren. Poor Lauren. How are you going to drag Lauren into this mess? I could picture Lauren crying right now. And a woman named Karen McKinley, as well as her messages, messages between her and him. See, and you wonder why Portia wanted to keep her, I mean, why Nini didn't want to be intruding in you guys' business. Because the last thing Nini needs is any legal issues. She has bills to pay, okay? But that song goes, I got love my heart, because I got bills to pay. Oh, I want deeper love, a deeper love, deeper love inside. Now I got love in my heart, because I got bills to pay. Okay, that's why Nene went over to zoo. She got bills to pay. She doesn't have time to be in the middle of y'all drama, and then you call her a bad friend for that. That's crazy to me. Simon also wants Portia to keep messages between her and her sister Lauren, a woman named Karen, as well as messages between her and him. The lawsuit states failure to do so would result in Portia getting some serious legal consequences. Oh, wow. His notice read, Portia is further notified that a failure to comply with this notice may result in sanctions or any destructions or failure to preserve any such evidence, including without limitations, adverse inferences against petitioner at trial sanctions, as well as an award of expenses and attorney fees necessitated by such conduct. This is like nasty work. I really thought they were still together. Y'all see my previous videos on those two. I thought that they were divorcing due to legal issues in regards to his citizenship. That to me was like, okay, it makes sense. Hey, you don't want any, you know, financial issues because of him. But no, y'all whole time, y'all really just hated each other. Like, that is crazy. I didn't see this heading down this way. I really thought they were going to stay together. I'm not even going to lie to you. The way that Portia flaunted this man and bragged about this man on social media and would give us glimpses into her life on social media, I thought she was madly in love. Despite all of the reports that I would see in the rumor mills, I didn't believe any of it because Portia was head over heels. I think she's heartbroken as hell. I think this will be one of the hardest seasons that she's going to have on the show because not only she's going to have to answer a whole lot of questions in regards to this man, she's still going to have to deal with the divorce throughout this season. So this season, I think, will be really, really good. Because let me tell you what this new season of Housewives is going to give us. It's going to give us season six. Y'all remember when Portia was going through the divorce with Cordell? She was like, oh, my God. And Nene was like, you are a bad friend. And we had uh, Monique with a Y. <laughs> Y'all cannot. Let me tell you so. Old Housewives will never be the same as New Housewives. <laughs> Y'all had Monique with a Y. Phaedra said, your name is Monique with a Y. Who does that? We're going to get that era back, and I'm very excited. I'm not excited about this award, but I'm excited about we getting the the old era of Atlanta back, because I really feel like it's headed down that path with the storyline, okay? Let me know what y'all think down about it, and do you guys think this is a little bit of karma? Speaking of more Housewives, y'all, looks like Candy is heading back to the TV screens, and her and um, freaking SWV are back. On Bravo, and they're going to have their show back. Mona dropped a promo. She's like, So, do you guys promise to communicate in Atlanta? Okay, we're back with another show and uh, another season of this show. I'm very excited. Of course, I am going to be recapping it. I did love the first season. Uh, I'm very disappointed that, you know, Latasha didn't come back. I'm very disappointed. I feel like she should have came back because this could have been your redemption because the last imprint you left in our minds. And here's the thing. We don't matter. We as viewers do not matter because this, this is their real lives. 
But with her trying to do a gospel career, you need to learn the word forgiveness and you need to learn the word of redemption. So to be able to be forgiven by your sister, it could have given us more of a look into how you are in your character and may have gotten a lot more people to support you through your music. So I think that would have been the best move for her than not doing the show again. Because now the last thing we think of her is, where's her money? Where's Tamika's money? You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's just the imprint that you left in us. So you, Latasha, I just don't think it was smart. Now, what I would have done is brought Latasha back and not let the husband film. I think that would have been the best. I think that would have been the best. I really feel like if the husband and her are going to stay together, I don't think he's good for the show to be involved in any way with the show, involved in any way with the tour, involved in any way with the music. The husband out of it completely. And I think the show would have been moved forward. And I think her and the sister would have been able to forgive each other. But, of course, that's not going to work because that's her manager. That's her man edger. Okay? So, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work. I'm excited to see it, though. Um, I do feel like SWV is going to be coming in on hot because last season they threw a whole lot of shade about calling them old and washed up, et cetera. So, you know, SWV, especially Coco, is going to have some things to say. And if y'all don't know, Coco washed not as TV. Coco's a ghetto girl, and I like that about her. <laughs> I love you, girl, that enjoys Ratchet TV because we could really, re like, talk. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you know Kashmir, I like you. You feel me? Like, if you know a uh, lady, I like you. Because it's like, we could talk. We connect on a deeper level. And she's that type of girl. So, the fact that I know she watches them shows, Coco gonna be coming in on hot. Mark my words. I'm telling you. SWV better keep it, I mean, uh, Escape better keep it very, very cute with Coco and, and uh, SWV. Because last season, they, were, they played it very nice with them. So, Candy... Tread lightly, girl. I'm just saying. Okay? Let me know if y'all are going to be too in. And if y'all want recaps, it'll matter because I'm going to drop them anyways. Ashley, you guys, is standing on business because she feels as if she is being very... He, she's very be, being accused incorrectly of trying to instigate. And she doesn't think that she was instigating that night by bringing Deborah to the party. And she said she would never use her hands unless somebody put her hands on her. I've said and repeatedly say, I don't condone fighting. I just don't do it. Like, we talk, we yell, we say things with our words. You know, my castmates and I have all gone toe to toe at some point in time. I've never, ever thought to use my hands. I'm just not that way. So for the actions that happened that night, they are not in alignment with who I am. They are not in alignment with what I believe. And I could never have anticipated that that would happen. Um, I know a lot of people think otherwise, but yeah, I just don't get down like that. I don't roll with it. It's unfortunate that it happened that way, but you know, I can only deal with the aftermath and uh, you know, that's, that's it. I'm an adult. You've never seen me put a hand on anybody. Okay. I'll never spank my children and I'll never put hands on anybody who doesn't touch me first. And that's just that. So um what else mia looked stunning looks stunning tonight on watch happens live i saw her little uh video she looks stunning i will have to say that um you know i love that girl she shared a lot and i commend her so much for revisiting um and i feel like ashley waited to the reunion to share a lot because now you're letting us know at the reunion that you rub michael's feet which I'm like, ugh, like, those are some feet to rub. Like, god damn. <laughs> you rub it away Australian corns. Like, that is something else, Ashley. But we commend you. You're doing the Lord's work. And letting people in to that very challenging part of her life that was shown tonight on the finale. That was not easy. And she's a trooper. So kudos to her. I've said and repeatedly say, I don't condone fighting. I just don't. Okay. I still feel like Ashley's feeling guilty right now. She's feeling the heat. Okay. And I think she's feeling the heat of her instigating something. Not, not instigated, but bringing somebody to a party 
that didn't work out in her favor. Because this the thing, Ashley, she would bring Deborah purposefully around to irritate Candace. And she never thought Deborah was going to hit Candace or get into no fight. She did that on purpose. That's why I, I don't take too much of what Ashley says seriously. Because you brought her there just to see what would kind of happen. You bring her in a lot of scenes just to kind of like see what will pop off. You can't do that. She's not a part of the cast. A lot of the girls don't like her, so stop bringing her around. And clearly, you could tell she's a super fan. So that's where Ashley loses me. Like, Miss Field on MBS. All right. One last thing, you guys. Cardi went on space last night and she was very upset at just people in general keep picking at her in regards to just her success with Enough oh, Miami. Now, it was revealed that uh, she landed, I believe, number nine on the charts, on the Billboard charts for Enough Miami yesterday. And some people feel like she got that in organically because of promos on TikTok. So there was a whole lot of picking on Cardi the last couple of days because of that. So she felt away and had this to say on space. Done with it. I'm done with bitches. I'm done with, I'm, I'm done with the arguing. If anybody want to see me, they could fight me. Like I'm, I'm, I got short nails now. So if anybody got an issue with me, they could link up and they could fight me. But I'm not going no back and forth no more with no bitch on on, on Instagram, on social media, on records, and nothing. Cause I've been I, that that should been for six years already. And guess what? No matter if I'm right or wrong, I'm always look like the villain. But you, y'all need to leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm not even being cocky about my accomplishments. I could really shit. I'm done with it. I'm done with bitches. And she also commented, say, y'all mad because I'm tired of indulging in drama, but was happy as soon as I came back online. These re rap bees was throwing me shots and y'all was loving it. When I defend myself, I'm the problem. When I don't want to give it to the drama, that's the issue too. Y'all love when they throw shots, but I hate when I catch it. And this page is so damn negative, yet y'all swear I paid it beyond here. After all the positive I said on that space, y'all took the 30 seconds that y'all could be negative and ran with it. I really feel like Cardi would be better if she didn't address anything negative. If Cardi moved in the spirit of Beyonce, I call it the spirit of Beyonce. In the spirit of Beyonce, she would be way further along. But she's still a street girl at heart. The girl, this is another girl that watched Not As TV. I'm telling y'all, that Not As TV be getting y'all hype. Y'all know how Bad Girls Club used to get people wanting to fight? And thump. That's what Not As TV do with some of these celebrities. Because they be tuned in. So now they just be ready just to just to thump. Because why are you on space? Which I get, they did clip that. And I did hear most of the space. And it wasn't all negative. Why would you want to clip your nails and fight you as a big celebrity as you are? You get what I'm saying? Like, that's below you. You should have bitches for that. So you can bail them out. Not you. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I, I don't get it. Like, you should be at a higher level than that. For you to still be saying something like that. Like, you are not cash. Okay? Let me know what y'all think down below about some of these topics and where are babies? Ain't no personal thing. All that